Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reform Presbyterian Church as we begin our day once more with a testimony of Charles Spurgeon in regards to how we can more fully enjoy our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now as we begin today, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are our rock, you are our strong tower, and you are the one who gives us the grace to make it through every day. And to God, as we begin this day with uh, these words of our brother, we pray, dear God, that you will use them uh, for our, for your mercy uh, to be uh, shown unto each and every one of us, that as we hear these words, that we will be challenged, we will be encouraged, and that we will long to be in your courts, both this day and forevermore. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today, again, we are going to go to Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening, and the verse that will start us out is Psalm 9-1. I will give thanks to the Lord. Thanksgiving should always follow answered prayer. Just as the mist of earth's gratitude rises when the Son of Heaven's love warms the ground. Has the Lord been gracious to you and inclined his ear to the voice of your prayer? Then thank him as long as you live. Let the ripe fruit fall from the fertile soil from which it draws its life. Do not fail to sing in praise of him who has answered your prayer and has given you the desire of your heart. To be silent about God's mercies is to incur, incur the guilt of ingratitude. It is to act as poorly as the nine lepers, who after they had been cured of their leprosy, did not return to give thanks to the healing Lord. To forget to praise God is to refuse to benefit ourselves. For praise, like prayer, is one great means of promoting the growth of our spiritual lives. It helps to remove our burdens, to excite our hopes, to increase our faith. It is a healthy and invigorating exercise that quickens the pulse of the believer and prepares him for, the, for new enterprises in his master's service. To bless God for mercies received, is also the way to benefit our fellow man. Let the humble hear and be glad, Psalm 34, 2 tells us. Others who have been in similar circumstances will take comfort if we can say, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Psalm 34, 3. Weak hearts will also be strengthened and sagging spirits will be revived. As the saints listen to our shouts of deliverance, Psalm, 30, or Psalm 32, 7. Their doubts and fears will be rebuked as we teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. They will also sing of the ways of the Lord when they hear us magnify his holy name. Praise is the most heavenly of Christian duties. The angels do not pray, but they do not cease to praise both day and night. And the redeemed, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, are never tired of singing the new song, Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. You know, that's a challenging word that we've just heard. It's easy for us in the Christian life to cry out unto the Lord in days of distress and to lift up our prayers unto God. But sometimes, as Spurgeon notes, we forget to give thanks to the Lord for answered prayer. And we do that not only in our worship on the Lord's Day as we gather together with our brothers and sisters in Christ, but we do that in the way that we live. We show our thanksgiving by loving the Lord in every single area of life. 
Now, we think about that, and we usually, as I said, reduce praise just to singing. But it's a lot more than that. It's showing the world that we are grateful for the grace and mercy and peace that has been granted unto us by our Heavenly Father. And let us today, as we go about our daily life, as we think about the many providential blessings that God has bestowed upon us, and as we think about the safety that he has brought to our lives, let us give praise unto our Father who art in heaven, and the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, who by his death and through his life has given unto us his shed blood, that we might be partakers of God's glory. Let's go now to our evening reading from Song of Solomon 813. O oh, you who will dwell in the gardens with companions listening for the voice, let me hear it. My sweet Lord Jesus remembers well the garden of Gethsemane. And although he has left that garden, he now dwells in the garden of his church. There he discloses himself to those who keep his blessed company. The voice of love with which he speaks to his beloved is more musical than the harps of heaven. There is a depth of melodious love within it that leaves all human music far behind. Tens of thousands on earth and millions above are consumed with its harmonious accents. Some whom I well know and who I greatly envy, are at this moment hearkening to the beloved voice. Oh, that I were a partaker of their joys! It is true, some of these are poor, others bedridden, and some near the gates of death, but, my Lord, I would cheerfully starve with them, pine with them, or die with them, if I might simply hear your voice. Once I heard it often, but I have grieved your spirit. Return me to me in compassion, and once again say to me, I am your salvation. No other voice can content me. I know your voice and cannot be deceived by another. Let me hear it, I pray. I do not know what you will say. Nor do I make my condition, my beloved. Simply let me hear you speak. And if it be a rebuke, I will bless you for it. Perhaps the cleansing of my dull ear will require a painful surgery. But let it cost me what it will. I have only one consuming desire. To hear your voice. Pierce my ear with your harshest notes. But do not allow me to remain deaf to your calls. Tonight, Lord. Grant your unworthy servant his desire, for I am yours, and you have bought me with your blood. You have opened my eyes to see you, and the sight has saved me. Lord, open my ear. I have read your heart. Now let me hear from your lips. Amen. You know, the portion that we just read uh, can be hard for us to hear. Yet, if we're honest with ourselves, it is true that there are times in our lives where our love for God grows cold, where we don't pray like we once did. We don't read the scriptures like we once did. We're not as attentive in worship as we once were. And we need to remember that if we find ourselves in such a state, that there is a blessed reality for the Christian, all we need to do is go unto the Lord, cry out unto him, pray for him to send rain in the midst of our spiritual famine, pray for him to send his Holy Spirit to re-energize our souls, fill us with his presence, and rekindle that love that we had at the first now, how do we exactly go about hearing from the Lord in the midst of these things? Well, remember that God has provided, provided to us weapons in which to fight spiritual battles. 
And we often think of those weapons as uh, primarily for enemies foreign and domestic. But sometimes the enemy of our soul is ourselves. And we need to get out of our own way. We need to ask the Lord to forgive us of our apathy, of our uh, laziness. And we need to ask the Lord for strength to persevere and to quiet the old man within us and remind our hearts that we love Christ more than any other thing. And there is nothing in this world that can provide what Christ has given in his blood. May the Lord bless you today. May the Lord keep you and may the Holy Spirit especially watch over you, keep you safe, and spiritually enrich you through his providence. Take care and God bless.